Well, here we are. Happy Monday, Rural America. I'm Marlon Bowling with you, your tour guide to the ag commodity trade. And it's time to take a look at the setup for our grain market activity this week with a little help from Mr. Brian Hoops. He's the president of a company called Midwest Market Solutions. They have branches all over the uh, western corn belt. And he joins us right now from uh, Springfield, Missouri. All right, uh, let's take a look at some new information that just came across the wire here, Brian. We'll see if it has any impact on the trade or not. It's an overnight export sale. We're starting to get back in that groove again. Let's see what it is. It's soybeans once again. And we have 104,000 metric tons this time. The buyer, you know, we need some uh, cloak and dagger music here or something for this. Uh, every time they announce it's to unknown destinations. But uh, anyway, we don't know who the buyer is on this one. Remember last week, I believe we had 300,000 that went to the unknown destinations. So uh, we know who it usually ends up to be, but we're just not sure yet. Well, let's take a look at our overnight trade and get a feel for what's going on. Let's look at the corn. And with our quotes provided by Bar Chart December Corn, traded on both sides of unchanged, but it ended up six lower on December at 550 and a half. Remember, we have the supply and demand report coming out Thursday this week. Uh, soybeans, November was six and a half lower at 1330 and a quarter. I know when I went to bed last night, it was higher. So, you know, it's back at it again, doing the same thing, chopping around. On the wheat in Chicago, we had September five and a half cents lower at 713 and a half. And on the Kansas City market last night, you had September finishing five lower at seven dollars and three quarters of a cent, just barely hanging on to that seven dollar mark. And uh, September spring wheat was down a quarter of a cent at nine sixteen. The deferred contracts were a little higher. Overall, uh, Brian, what do you think of the overnight trade and its inability to hang on to uh, early gains last night? Yeah, good morning, Marlon. Uh, just real choppy action like we've seen almost every overnight for the last uh, two to three weeks. Corn continues to hover at that 550 a bushel mark. Every day since July 22nd, 23rd, something like that, we've traded 550 December corn at some point during the session. And, and today or last night was no different. The soybeans were actually rallied up into a resistance at the 1343, failed at that level and pulled back and, and went all the way into the next support area, which I had at 1329 overnight. So it traded a fairly wide range. Um, and I think we will be helped out by this export sale announcement this morning. Trade was hoping we get some more sales after a sale on Thursday and Friday. We received one, and now we'll start looking at uh, ahead at uh, crop condition ratings, how they'll come out this afternoon. Uh, we'll be talking about how much rainfall either fell in certain areas or didn't fall in, in some areas. It was, a, I think, a really a kind of a have and have not. Talked with clients in northwest Iowa who received you know, virtually just a half inch of rain, and, and a few miles from them, they had over two and a half inches of rain. It just it really, really varied on your location how much rain you had, um, but you really needed some rain because it's going to be extremely hot this week. All right, Brian, last week at this time, you and I were talking about a formation on the November soybean chart. And well, here we have it right here. Look at this. It's like magic. Uh, this was the wedge that we drew on the chart last week at this very time, last Monday. And we had the high up here. Uh, if you're uh, listening on Sirius XM, get that RFD TV Now app and you can see what I'm talking about. Uh, right here, we had that high and we drew it on there. It was a pretty short term. Uh, wedge, a very sharp incline right here up to that point, and it broke through. And by the time we went down here, do you know, I think we came, uh, came down about a dollar and 10 cents, I believe, from our earlier high. So anyway, that was a week ago. Now it looked at that time like we broke out of that wedge, but now let's take a look. You can actually redraw the wedge because after it sold off and took that wedge out, now it's like it's in the process of making a longer term wedge formation right there. Easy to see now, right? So does that mean, Brian, I guess my question to you, is that a thing? Can you have a wedge within a wedge, like a nested wedge formation? Is that what we're seeing now? Well, yes, you can have that type of pattern, Marlon. Um, you know, it, it, it does happen. You know, you look at that uh, chart pattern that you're talking about and you could 
you know, it's like a piece of art hanging on the wall. A lot of people see different things when they look at it. You know, you can see that that wedge inside the wedge pattern. You can draw a longer term wedge like you had shown. You can also look at that. Maybe that's a bear flag that we saw uh, developing after last week's breakdown to the 1308 area and then a rally back up to 43. Now, now we're looking at a possible bear flag that we could break out to the downside. And you confirm that with a break below last week's lows of 1308. So there's a lot of uh, things going on on the charts. Um, but what it's going to get down to, I think, is uh, what the USDA says this week and what our fundamentals are going to end up uh, being, actually, how how much uh, crop we grow and how much we're able to export. And then, of course, the debate will continue as to about the accuracy of those numbers, like it always <laughs> does. Uh, Brian, we'll come back and talk a little livestock action when we come back. Brian Hoops is our guest. We'll be back after this. We're back with Brian Hoops of Midwest Market Solutions. Uh, Brian, let's take a look at our live cattle trade and how we wrapped up last week. And on the live cattle board, we had the October finishing 30 cents higher heading into the weekend. It was at 127.87, but the deferreds were very strong. April was over a dollar higher. That was kind of interesting, and they're already at a premium. Now on the feeders, look at that. Near buys, over $2 higher. September was 217 higher Friday at 163.32. And then you get to the lean hogs, and this is how we wrapped up last week with October 47 higher at 87.60. But just like on live cattle, the far out deferreds were leading the charge. Uh, they were over a dollar higher. So on the live cattle and the lean hogs, does that concern you that you don't have the front end months leading the way? Well, it, it is usually concerning. You know, you look at that August contract and we're holding you know, roughly a $20 premium over the other deferred contracts. So that's probably too much of a disparity. And that's why we're seeing some of the strength in the back months narrowing up that spread between August and, and all the deferred contracts. Uh, our exports remain pretty strong for pork uh, overall. And, and I think we probably a little undervalued in some of those deferred contracts while August is more closely aligned to the index that it's trading off of. And uh, we should see, I think that trend continue. We try and narrow up that spread between the front month and some of those deferred contracts um, and most likely it's going to be a combination of August dropping and the deferreds rallying. The uh, beef cutout value is the wholesale beef trade on Friday. They continued to surge ahead. Uh, they were both higher on choice cuts and select cuts again on Friday. Is that going to help to support our cash trade? Yeah, absolutely. The cash is called steady to higher for the week. Higher cutout values, stronger cash trade last week, all leads into stronger uh, market uh, for this week. We had option expiration of the August contract on Friday. I think that produced a lot of volatility. We saw a big sell-off and then a sharp recovery by the end of the day. So now we have first notice day beginning today for the August contract. I don't really expect to see any deliveries at this price, but it could add to the volatility. But look for the cattle market to try and work its way higher here. Um, cash markets start to come up, and that will be supportive to the August contract. And one thing I did want to point out, I want everybody to be aware of overnight, the crude oil market, in case you hadn't heard or seen, let's take a look at West Texas Intermediate Crude, just so you know, uh, September futures down $1.83 at 66.45, and they had been $1.30 lower than that at one point. So at one point there, they were over $3 lower. We'll keep an eye on that. Thanks, Brian, for all the info. Brian Hoops, Midwest Market Solutions, this morning on a Monday. Janet?